awesome. Okay. Where are we? Good to see you all here today for the 2023 National Simultaneous Story Time. My name is Jess Menendez and I am the Education Program Coordinator here at Sydney Zoo. Hello boys and girls, my name is Joshua Nichols. I'm the First Nation um, Education uh, Supervisor here at uh, Sydney Zoo. But today we gather here today on uh, Darug Lens. Darug Lens then from north of the Hawks River, ACT Sydney Harbour, they have to join the Low Blue Mountains. So we're all within that boundary uh, that all belongs to the uh, Darug people. I want to acknowledge uh, the Darug people as the traditional custodians of the land where they all uh, gather here today. I want to pay my respect to the elders both past, present and future. And also I to pay my respect to other Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people present here today. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Today we are at the beautiful Sydney Zoo in Western Sydney. Welcome to all from Australia, New Zealand and beyond. And our readers on site here in our amphitheatre. There's lots of you here today too. We're very excited to be hosting this event. And before I hand over to our author, Rebecca Young, and our illustrator here, Keith McKenzie, I'd like to thank a few important people. So thank you to the Australian Library and Information Association and Scholastic Australia for their work to continue to hold this event, which is their 23rd year. Thank you to Rebecca and Heath for creating this book, The Speedy Plot. <laughs> the animals uh, that star in this story are fantastic, and my own children love it, and they'll be reading along today. And thank you to everyone joining us today. You are the heart of this amazing event, National Simultaneous Story Time, where we read the same book at the same time across not only Australia and New Zealand, but around the world. The imagination of story time is truly something that can bring us all together, whether it's families or in classrooms or online as well. So please join me in welcoming the Speedy Sloth author, Rebecca Young, to announce the official reading numbers and start the countdown. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. To Josh. Thanks, Jess, and thank you to Josh. Um, hello, everyone. How are we all? Good? Uh, it's so good to be here today on Darug Land at Sydney Zoo with Heath McKenzie and all of you um, to celebrate Alia's National Simultaneous Story Time for 2023. So I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we're reading from today and to pay my respects to Elders past and present, our original storytellers. So thank you to everyone here with us and everyone tuning in online uh, right across Australia and New Zealand. Um, isn't it cool that we're all read the exact same book at the exact same time? It is amazing. So, amazing. Yeah, so who here likes sloths? Yeah? Okay, what, what do you know about them? Fast or are they slow? That's right, they are extremely slow. In fact, did you know that sloths up in their trees, they sleep up to 20 hours a day. Did you know that, Heath? I did not know that. Yeah, well, um, I think that's why I've always liked them because I find it really hard to get out of bed too. I would have assumed they slept for way longer, but there you go. Yeah, cool sloth facts. I know one sloth fact. I know that maybe like when they need to go to the toilet, they don't do it in the tree. They come down to the ground and they do it on the ground and they do it like once a week. Once a week. So they risk their lives just to do a poo because they could get attacked on the ground. They don't want to be there. So they take a week, they get down, they go to the toilet, they go back up. Okay. That is my sloth fact and I love it. <laughs> well, once a week, I guess they would at least save on toilet paper, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So. We're really excited to read our book with you today, um, which stars a sloth and her name is Spike. And she tries something that you wouldn't necessarily expect of a sloth. She wants to run a race. And there's a lot of sloths that don't think that she can do it, but she doesn't care. She wants to run and that's exactly what she's going to do. So um, we'll find out shortly how she goes, but first, I'm going to announce the exact number of people who are reading along with us today. Yes. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> are you okay. ready? Are you ready? You are good, good. It's unbelievable. Okay, today reading with us, reading this book at the same time, we have 
two million three hundred and fifty seven thousand nine hundred and sixty people. Isn't that amazing? Wow. <laughs> well done, Will. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And yeah, that is making me dizzy. Um, okay, and so it's actually time to count down to our reading. So does everyone want to join in counting down from 10? Yeah? Okay, let's do it. All let's right. It. So 10, 9, nine 8, 7, eight, 6, eight, 5, 4, 3, 2, two 1. Hooray! All right, let's do it. Let's okay. The Speedy Sloth. Okay, please read along with me. Okay. All right, it was finally time for the event of the year. Spike couldn't believe it. The great race was here. The other sloth said it couldn't be done. Nap, you're dreaming. You're a sloth. Huh? But Spike didn't care. She was ready to run. See, Spike likes to think that hard work pays, so she'd been in the gym for the last seven days. Uh, one! <laughs> See, it took her a whole week to do one push-up. That's, that's determination, huh? One week. She, she checked her laces and prepared to soar. Her mum wished her luck, luck as she jogged out the door. Be back for dinner. You'd better be ready. I'm cooking your favourite, she called out, spaghetti. Okay, now I'm seeing some pretty fast animals here. There's a hyena, a gibbon, an ostrich, and a cheetah. So, the others looked fit. The others looked quicker. They looked at the sloth and tried not to snicker. The races lined up. Then the starting horse. Spike took off fast, her furry feet flew. She bolted like lightning, she practically soared. There was no sloth who'd ever run faster before. Okay, she sprinted so fast, she was all but a blur of speed and technique and sweaty sloth fur. I don't know if she's moved that far, Heath, hey? I, I think that's the starting line right there, right? That is the starting line. I mean, she's still before the starting line. So she's made progress, but yeah. So <laughs> Snail overtook her, but that guy was a beast, as fast as a race car, or a push bike at least. Okay, now on this spread actually, once you have a little look and notice the, the leaves that are there, which are yellow and orange and red, and what does that kind of suggest? I think that it suggests, yeah? And so I think it shows just how long this is for. And there's something also I want you to have a look at. In the crowd, there's a water buffalo there. She's very pregnant. She has on a yellow coat and a pinky red scarf. So I want you to keep an eye out for her for when she turns up again, okay? So in fact, Spike was trailing a loris, a grub, a hare and a tortoise, a mischievous cub, a moonwalking meerkat, a chimp who loves flipping, a burrowing mole, a giraffe prone to tripping, an old armadillo, a daydreaming cougar, and an elephant riding a broken down scooter. On past Spike. All that remained was Peter the Cheetah, who bolted ahead shouting, Ha uh ha, -huh, I beat ya! <laughs> No way she'd quit. Okay, can you a buffalo? I different there. Yeah, her baby. That's how long this race has been going for. Hey, it was there. She could see it. A fallen down sign. She grinned and the sign. 
The other sloths gasped. They reeled back unsteady. Look there, it's Spike. She's back already. Yes, Spike was slow, but for a sloth, she was fast. And yes, it is true that this sloth came last. But Spike didn't care. She was a winner. And she made it back home in time for her dinner. <laughs> Luckily, her mum came. Huh? Yeah. Well, thank you. We yeah. did it. We did it. <laughs> yeah. And what a story. Yeah. Oh, that was so much fun. Thank you, everyone, for reading along. Um, now, who wants to see Heath draw Spike? Yeah, me too. That's, it. That's enough it. of you. Over to you, Heath. I want. But really close. Is this too close? I'll put it in my mouth. I'll just put it in my mouth. Is that my man? I'll be using paper and this pen. Can I grab this one? Yeah, I will. And this is not a microphone, but I started using it as one. Oh, here we go. So, just bear with us. Hey, that's good. Amazing. Amazing. A little fantastic. All right. So now this is locking the drawing, but don't worry about that. I'll put it back in this real life. So, sloths. Have you all seen a sloth before? Yeah, 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 good, good. So you know they don't really look much like what I drew in the book, yeah? Yeah, no, you can be honest. I know what I did. If I was really, I mean, look at the sloth. If it was on the ground, not pooing, I went to a pooing, but if it was on the ground, um, it would kind of just be like, kind of, there it is, there it is, and there's another bit, and it's got some claws, and it's got a face, and it's meow, and it's just sort of lying there. That's it, like a puddle of sloth. <laughs> which is not much fun and not useful for this book. So I didn't draw a sloth like that. Take it away. I drew a sloth like this. Now, I started with, because everything I draw is kind of basic shape that I then draw better. So actually, what I'll do is I'll see if I can show you that. So my sloths, the spike. There's, there we go. I've got a picture there so I know what I'm drawing. It's always good to remember what it looks, see what it looks like. I'll start with an oval. Kind of like that. Weird oval, rough shape, that's fine, that's the face. Then if I just, you can, and by the way, if you feel the urge, draw along at home. Get on board. You've drawn an oval so far. Now you draw like a, like a circle on top. Very easy. And now there's like little tufty flops. So we'll chuck a bit there. One, two, three, one, two, three. Good. It's all going so well so far. Now Spike has spoke. So let us put Spike, first put a headband. Partly me talking out loud like this is remembering what I actually need to do. Now we chuck on some look. Spike. Amazing. It's already coming to life. Now the body, very much an hourglass figure, quite literally. So if I go down here and then around, and then on the other side I go down here and around. There we are. Or a pair, if you will. This is just this is what we're doing. Now um, there are shorts. So we'll do a little, make sure there are leg holes for the shorts there coming together. So far it looks like she's wearing a weird bodysuit. So I'll draw a chop in half here. And now we have hooray. And then I'll do a little bit of elastic for this short there and I'll put a tie so the shorts don't fall down. Because you don't want that. And now uh, a single top, a running top. Just there, little, little circular line. You can all do that. And then you chuck one this side and this side. Hurrah. Now we have an armless legless sloth with no face going well. <laughs> so, what next? Let's do the feet. So, I'll do some lines that will become legs. There we are. Easy. <laughs> you can all do that. Great. And then now the shoes standing, I'm going to have a little, like a sort of a half circle lump. And then I'll put a little whoop there and there. And that's like, the they have tongues. And then you can chuck on some details. And look, I'll go with the traditional drawing I drew in the book, but you can design any sort of running shoe you want. I'm not going to stop you. 
And then I'll chuck some stripe. Stripe, stripe, stripe. Great. Still no face, no arms. The perspective's a bit off. We're working fast. Now, um, <laughs> trying to keep a sloppy vibe. We're not going to have arms all over the place. The arms are going to be, uh -oh. And very tired. So I'll just do, and you know, um, um, pause for the tree climbing business that they do. You could put a little, like a little paw pad palm <laughs> if you want. Don't have to. Your job, your life. Darken it down there a bit. Do, 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 do. And now, anything missing? Yeah. Yeah. Who said no? <laughs> yes! There's lots of there's something missing! Yes, you're right! The, the hairy stuff. You're exactly right. That's what's missing. <laughs> oh! Oh! Sorry. The face! Yes! Yay. Good point, good point. The amount of times I forget the face. <laughs> the bit that tells all the emotion in the story. Silly me. So! The face. Now look, use your imaginations and imagine I do, I'll do it. Uh, I don't want to do it, but I'll do it like shump. If I do a cross right there, that helps me tell where the face is going to be. And in the middle of my cross is where I'll put my nose, which is like a rectangle. Just a simple rectangle. You can all do that. And then little half circles. Whoop, whoop, there we go. Nostrils. Now she can breathe whilst exerting herself when running. Now we need eyes. Eyes. Um. They can go here. <laughs> one eye here, nice big round eyes. Lovely round eyes. There and there. Um, this looks a bit too lively right now, so we'll make a little bit of a tired eyelid. There we go. And we'll put a nice big pupil in the middle. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Is it coming together for you? Is it good? No! Yes, it is! Yeah. Now! <laughs> yes, it is! Doing my best. Now we'll do a smile. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Like, don't rush me. <laughs> I'm very softly. Yeah. Okay. Eyebrows. Eyebrows. There they are. They're there. Stop chanting for them. Now. <laughs> Last but not least. The next. The next. <laughs> Sorry, I'll make it bigger. Is that better? Yeah, look at that. Hey, even more happy to be here. <laughs> Yay! And then there's like... Thank you. <laughs> I need you here. Normally I don't draw in front of two and a half million people, so... Pressure. <laughs> Last but not least, there's like dark patches around the eyes, which actual sloths have, so I've done something really like a sloth for a change. Um, which I'll do an outline for, just around there. Which I could, you know, I could sort of stripe in a bit to give you a bit of darkness, but there you go. Very cool. Check it out. There we are! There it is! Wow. I'm telling you, it's giving a cheer! Nice one, hey? Thank you. Very cool. There we go. Yeah. Shall we move on? Yeah, Where's okay. Oh, I might need to take that mic back. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you very much. Don't mind me. Okay. Thank you, thank Back. you. That was so cool, Heath. Love seeing you draw. Um, okay, now stay tuned because we've got something very, very cool coming up. But first I wanted to just say a few thank yous. Um, first, we wanted to say a huge thank you to Alia Lianza. This has been such a huge and unforgettable honor for us mm. um, to read our book to so many people. Um, and to Sydney Zoo for hosting us today. Like, we couldn't think of a better location for NSS this year. It's just been unreal. Um, and from Scholastic, thank you to Sharon Turner, our incredible publisher Tiffany Malins, and also Andrew Burkett, to Nicole Stoffberg, who designed this book, um, and to everyone in, ch in children's books who've been so supportive. Uh, also to all the teachers and librarians out there uh, for the amazing effort they've made this year with displays and activities and races and dress-ups. Can you believe some of the stuff we've seen? The amazing amount of creative uses of paper plates and craft supplies yeah. has been mind-boggling. You're it's, all amazing. It's unbelievable, but also wanted to thank you in particular for getting books into the hands of kids every single day. You're the absolute best. Um, thank you to you, he. Oh. 
Thank you. Um, I'm so thankful to have made this book with you and to see you bring Spike and her belief in herself and determination to life on the page so beautifully. It's been so good to work with you. Um, and to my friends and family, my nephews, Kem and Noah, um, and my daughter, Shelby, who's watching from preschool today. Hi, Oak Taramara, and hi, Shelby. I love you. Um, and lastly, thank you to everybody right and everyone who's tuned in today. Uh, it's just, um, it's been amazing. And thank you for helping to make this NSS 2023 a record-breaking day of reading. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, while we're here, I agree with everything you just said, <laughs> but I'd also like to thank you for writing a fabulous story. Oh, thank because, you, Heath. Look, I write some sometimes, but it's much better when somebody else writes them <laughs> way better than I could. Thank you. So I can then create sloths and draw fun things like this. I can't think of things for myself, so it's wonderful when creative people like Beck think of them for me. <gasps> thank I'm you. I'm very grateful. And I'd like to thank, yeah, all of you, everybody watching. I'd especially like to thank Ava and Oscar and everyone at MPRPS, if you are watching. Hi. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's been amazing. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and now we have a really special guest um, coming up. So over to you, Jess. So I'm going to ask everyone here live in the audience, please move over here at this point, because that's really fun. Um, we are going to be really quiet, because we're about to meet someone who is really got really good hearing, big ears. So I'll get Lauren to come in and talk to you, Tony. So this one of my favourite animals. And we don't have any floss here in Australia at any zoo, but we have an amazing animal here. It's one of my favourite animals, and that is the koala. Oh my god! Hi, Lauren. Hi, Tony. So koalas are one of my favourite animals, like I said, and they're not a bear. So a lot of people call them a koala bear, but they're not a bear. They're in fact an amazing marsupial. And so Shawnee actually has a pouch where she would carry her baby, which is called a joey. And if you look at your pinky finger nail, everybody, when they're born, they're smaller than your pinky finger nail. Isn't that amazing? That's a tiny little jelly bean. And Shani has these big, sharp claws, just like a sloth, to help them climb a tree. The sloths like to hang under a branch, don't they? But koalas, like Shani, like to find a big Y in a tree like this and wedge themselves in and get nice and comfortable. And they have a really hard bottom that helps them to get nice and comfy and not get sore legs or bum when they're sitting oh in the tree. It's amazing how well adapted they are and how much she would camouflage. Hopefully everyone knows what that means, but if you don't, they blend in to the trees that they climb really high into, and so they're very hard to see in the wild. That's an amazing, amazing animal. I would like to say a huge thank you to Rebecca and Heath. That was amazing. Um, it was such a lovely book. Did everyone enjoy how Spike ran her own race? She's such an awesome, awesome animal. Very cool. And we even have some other animals here at the zoo that were in your book. I don't know if you knew that. Well, we've got cheetahs and chimpanzees and meerkats and giraffes and elephants. They were all along in that race too. And did you notice on the page where, the, where Spike was racing a grub, a loris, a hare and a tortoise, there was actually a koala in there. I yes. noticed that. So Shani was there cheering Spike and all the other races on too. So I would like to thank everyone for reading along today for National Simultaneous Storytime. Thank you again. To Rebecca and Heath, and a big thank you to Lauren and Shani for coming out to see us and showing off our beautiful koalas, and a big goodbye from Sydney Zoo. Bye, everybody. Thanks.